Hi, I'm Alex from Lumsden Agency and welcome to the monthly catch up for August. We're gonna get right into it this, this month. I'm here with Michael Henry from Aussie Home Loans Dulwich Hill. Michael, thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Thank you mate, for being here. Uh, the burning question that everybody's asking, I'm interested in your opinion. Consumer confidence has nosedived. Unemployment has skyrocketed. We're in a recession, the government's piling up debt. Everything is saying that house prices should be dropping, but they're not. You know, clearance rates have been between 60 and 70% this month, which, you know, for winter, that's, that's pretty good. Um, we've seen maybe a 2% drop since all, the, all this lockdown started. What do you reckon? Why are prices holding strong? Mate, I think the, the answer is a, a really simple one. There's a, a, a lack of stock and there's an abundance of people ready to buy. I mean, I can only speak for the areas that I work in, obviously, but um, I mean, we're seeing people are keen to, to try and get out there, get approved. Um, I think the term that I would use is, is opportunistic. So, I mean, everybody has this assumption that the market's falling. So getting in there now and buying something when the market's low might mean a bargain. It's been really, really busy, surprising. Like this, the COVID rebound for us and, and, and say us as an industry has been pretty big, I reckon. Um, I mean, seeing that a lot of people are resilient uh, to the changes in the economy, to, to uh, you know, not just, not everybody, let's say this way, not everybody is, is getting government benefits and, and, and requiring them. Lots of industries have, have uh, persevered, people are going strong, people are applying for loans and going to these open houses where there's, you know, I mean, you could probably tell me a better percentage, but a, a far smaller number of listings and a lot of people ready to buy, pressure's up, man. Like the, it's, it's, I think it's a, 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 a bit, little bit of that, that pressure cooker environment is still there. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, what, what we obviously represent different sides of the transaction most of the time, but what I'm hearing from a lot of vendors is that they just want to wait and see what happens and, and ride this out. They're not so confident with going on the market right now. Um, probably coming into September, we're seeing that a little bit less than we have over the last sort of three months. Um, but yeah, definite lack of stock. I guess because everybody's thinking that there aren't as many buyers out there, but you're saying your clients are still ready to go. Ready to go. And, and surprisingly, I mean, we're seeing, you know, pre-approvals being renewed and renewed because we're unable to get everybody into a property. You know, bottom line, I mean, the banks are signing off, people's money is available, but there simply isn't enough property. And it's funny you say, I mean, are talking about uh, like listings and, and uh, a, a reduction in stock. Agents, uh, my apologies, uh, uh, vendors holding off. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, there's a, an environment where people are expecting these these doomsday predictions to come true. Pro property prices to drop, you know, double digit percentages. If I was a vendor, I'd probably be a little bit concerned, you know. And if I didn't have to sell, maybe wait till you know greener pastures sort of show themselves. And this spring uplift that we normally see, I mean. For, for, for us again, our, our buyers, our potential buyers are, are already eyeing that market going, okay, there's gonna be some more opportunity. If we're ready to roll and money's uh, good to go, then hopefully another you know, opportunity presents itself. But I mean, you tell me, what, what are you seeing from the opposite side? Are we, are, we, are we to expect more listings? Are we to expect uh, vendors to sort of be a little bit more, what would you say, happy to list? I mean more confident yeah yeah what i'm seeing right now obviously coming into spring selling season there's a little bit more movement um it's always tricky we do with a lot of family properties and it's always tricky to uh time things around the october school holidays that's always something to look out for around this time um but yeah i'm thinking that we probably won't see a whole lot more stock come on the market until um Q1 next year, I think sort of February next year, probably mid-January is what we'll see a lot of things coming on um, or later. I think that from what we're seeing, people are still just waiting to see. And I think that we will see a strong spring and I think that that will give people confidence going into 2021. We've talked about obviously a, a lack of stock and, and banks are still readily giving out money if, the, if people can, can you know pass a few of the criteria. And do you know what? That's actually probably a good point to touch on now. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that assume uh, that banks have tightened up a lot as a result of COVID. And although some measures are in place to protect themselves, you know, 
looking out for JobKeeper or ensuring that there's uh, continuous and regular income, a little bit more scrutiny for self-employed and, and those types of people. But otherwise it's business as normal, business as usual. But add, let's add one more thing into it, government incentive, which has been big, right? So like there's two sides to this coin. That was gonna be my next question. Is that what's propping it up? Or like is low interest rates enough to keep, keep it going where it's at? Or is it government incentives that are propping it up? Well, I guess from, from my point of view, government incentives are two separate paths, right? Is, is that a hindrance? Are people that are getting government incentives, are they not being able to borrow right now? And is it everybody else that's propping the market up? So I reckon if we looked at it in, in two probably separate parts, so you've got the, the, the financial support, those, those measures the government put in place like JobKeeper and JobSeeker and all of those sort of things, although usable as income, for most people, it's going to be a reduction in their in their actual pay. So that that side of things alone, I mean, we can use it. So it's not necessarily a hindrance. It's still allowing people who had uh, means otherwise, maybe dual incomes, uh, one spouse that, or, or partner that's not uh, being affected, whereas the other one's still getting some government incentive. That's all good. We can use that. What I was referring to the other side was the, all the like the new build stimulus things. The I mean, first homeowner grant, which is not new. Stamp duty concessions changing and increasing, home builder. So, I mean, that was the plan. That was the government plan, right? To chuck a few things out there to say, hey, let's get this really strong, big uh, construction machine working again. Because that was one thing that was going for us that was amazing over the last couple of decades. I mean, we had a lot of space to fill. A lot of people want to live in a house, a lot of, a lot of builders out there. So, uh, I think that has also provided a little bit of confidence. Um, I mean, look, we're, for anyone who doesn't know, obviously Dollar Chill, inner west, inner west of Sydney, we're in a position where this is a, a built out place. Unless you're going up, you're not going anywhere. There's no vacant land, but like that, just that little 25 grand home builder incentive. I mean, we've got three or four people just in the last couple of weeks that are doing major renos instead of moving, instead of selling and upgrading. Like, eh, market's not that good. I'm not gonna get much of a profit. How about we add, change and reconfigure our house? That's all on the back of this uh, government stimulus. So, I mean, going back to your question, is it a hindrance? Maybe that one is for you because people are not selling their houses, you know? They're, they're staying put and building up. But I mean, from where I sit, and I'm sure brokers, bankers will all say the same thing. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening for, for us out there. So if you guys can get more listings on the, on the market, man, we're all good to go. Mate, a big thing that I'm hearing right now, a lot of people come to me uh, asking about what they need to get into the property market. Um, big thing is deposits. Obviously, interest rates are super low. The RBA says they're not going anywhere. What light can you shed on that? So rates are low. I mean, record lows, money's cheap, which is awesome. And, and the RBA has said that they're gonna rely on, on fiscal policy to bring us back out of the hole rather than continuing to drop rates. We'll see. And the big other question there is, Will the banks pass it on if there is a rate cut? Yeah, who knows? See. <laughs> so, but, but deposits, I mean, uh, a huge component, right? So that's probably the first step in any back of the envelope calculation is figuring out like how much cash you need. And without going into it too much, the bottom line is that 20% is not necessary. You know, that, that used to be the thing, 20% deposit, uh, you know, now banks expect that for, for young people saving 20% plus stamp duty and closing costs. It's a lot of money. And it's not realistic. I mean, a million dollar property, you've got to have 250 grand almost ready to roll. I mean, not that many people that I know growing up would have had that sort of money. So banks are definitely happy to, to leverage a little bit and still offer like amazing interest rates at that point. There was a period of time, uh, you know, when even just a few years back, when higher leverage, I mean, borrowing 90% and 95% meant you paid a premium. But, but now some lenders are literally charging the same rate whether you've supplied a 20% deposit or a seven or 8% deposit. So uh, that's one thing. So leveraging a little bit is still possible, but also another little, a little niche that has that, uh, really helped us a lot recently is family guarantees or family pledges. So essentially you can use you know, equity in mum and dad's home uh, to cover a portion of your deposit that you don't have to physically give out. So that's another little, a little sneaky little way of getting in without having to save for 12, 15, 30 yeah. years to get the cash together. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, mate, we've obviously answered a few questions on the surface here. If people have other questions, how can they get in contact with you? 
Uh, easy. I mean, just hit us up uh, on Facebook, Google Aussie Dollar Chill, Facebook Aussie Dollar Chill. You'll find us. Perfect. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Well, technically I was here, but you know. Correct. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>